What exactly is the last dance? It's an opportunity to make history, to cement yourself as the greatest ever, an opportunity to accomplish something that's never been done before, the first and last dance, where everything is earned, out the mud, where the kids are Vance tough, where every day the only competition is us versus us. This is your chance, your opportunity, your moment. So the process of changing the name from Zebulon B. Vance High School to Julius L. Chambers High School really started after um, the summer um, of 2020, um, after the killing of George Floyd. Um, there were protests in our community, um, and it really caused members of our, of our community to really revisit uh, the names of our schools and other institutions here in, in the Charlotte area. Um, there was um, a push um, from teachers and push from community members to us to revisit our name. And so what we did, we gathered um, alumni, um, teachers, students, um, community members, and we created um, a group uh, to really, to look, an advisory group to look at the name and to begin to come up with recommendations for changing the name. Um, there was, were several recommendations um, to change the name to other names other than Julia Cell Chambers. But ultimately, um, the panel voted or the committee voted um, on Julia Cell Chambers High School. And um, we really feel like that name represents a positive narrative and a positive change from a Confederate general to a civil rights leader who fought for um, equality and equity uh, in school systems and throughout our community. And so we are very proud um, to change the name from Zebulon B. Vance High School to Julius L. Chambers High School. Um, personally, um, you take me as a principal out of it and just uh, me as an African-American male in the Charlotte community, um, I'm honored um, to be involved in the process and to lead a school that um, has gone through the transformation process of going from, again, a, a Confederate general um, who was um, an advocate of slavery to someone who fought for freedom. I couldn't be more honored and I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with pride and joy to be able to have this opportunity to lead um, our school. You know, I've grown to become a Vance boy, a mud boy. Uh, it, meant, it means a lot. It, it's, it's more than just a, it's just a name. Um, the name change is also amazing being that it's a, it's a black man that, you know, it's done great things for the state of North Carolina and, you know, in his, life, in his lifetime. But, um, I just feel like even though they're changing the name, it's still going to be us. We're we going we gonna to still call it Vance. We, still, we call it Julius Chambers for new kids, for you know, everybody that's coming in. But for us, we're still going to be Vance. You know? We're we not going not gonna to ever change. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, it's like it's in my blood, it's in my veins, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, 
all vans. I bleed orange and blue. Um, yeah, so I mean, I just represent everybody that's ever came to the school. All the people that came to the school and were older than me, I represent them. Um, represent everybody that's coming to the school now. Uh, the principals, the teachers, everybody, you know, I just feel like they're me and I'm them. And if I'm going to go out there every day, I'm going to put on the best performance I can so they can be proud of, proud of the fact that we all go to events and we all attend events and we all went through the same things and we're all in this together. To be honest, I never really knew I was going to be a star player. I just knew I was going to be a player that needed to do his job to help the team win. All I wanted to do was help my team win. Um, so that means I worked hard every day. I gave my all every time. I gave every time we got on the field, every time we came in the weight room. Um, I wanted to show that they could depend on me, especially early as a freshman, uh, starting a freshman at varsity. I wanted them to know that they didn't have to worry about me being out there. I wouldn't make their senior year not a good one, not a good one to leave out on. I wanted to make sure they could count on me. Being an athletic director at a, a predominantly black high school where your uh, football team is predominantly black, one of the um, challenges that we face is um, telling our kids or assuring our kids to be confident when they play. Meaning, you know, society tells us, you know, you, you have to be humble when you play football. When you score a touchdown, don't beat your chest. When you uh, make a great play. Don't embarrass your opponent by jumping up and down and celebrating. But we want our kids to celebrate. We want our kids to have fun. We want our kids to, to beat on their chest, to celebrate themselves. And, and so the biggest challenge is allowing our kids to do that and feel comfortable to do that without, um, I guess, adhering to what society says is unsportsmanlike, if, if you get what I'm saying. from last year. Uh, like I said, kids want to come to Vance and play, and we was fortunate enough to have a, a pretty good freshman class with uh, Casey, uh, Dalen Smothers, uh, AKA Hollywood. Um, and those kids really, really are pretty much carrying the team for the most part, uh, especially Dalen. Uh, so we've had some ninth graders, uh, Jackson Bass, uh, Jalen Swindell, some you know staples in the program for the uh, past two years that really carried the team this year. So. As far as rebuilding, you know, rebuilding, I guess you could say, is a uh, word that means you have to go find people. Uh, but we had the kids right here uh, to do the things that we do, and that's why I said reload. We had a lot of adversity this year. Um, we didn't injuries. I got injured. That was the first time I've ever been injured, and um, that was a learning experience for me because I learned how to be patient and. Um, I had to learn how to trust my teammates, and uh, it really just just taught me patience. From being on this team, I've learned how to not be selfless, you know, worried about individual stats or anything. It's really a team game. Like, you can have one yard, one catch. As long as y'all win the game, that's the main goal, you know, the team goal, and everything is good. Last year, you know, I came in, and there were already established leaders on the team, but this year, they were all gone, so I had to step up into that role, and. I had my ups and downs, but I feel like I did a pretty good job. As an athletic director, I, I feel that my job duty, my main job duty, is to help to create a memorable experience 
um, for athletes here at Vance. And, you know, that entails finding money uh, to, to support our kids, uh, finding the right coaches, um, creating and, and maintaining a budget um, so that, you know, we can have a positive experience for our athletes. So when I first arrived at Vance, one thing I kind of took like a leadership role in is, you know, number one, following all of our kids on social media um, so that I'm able to monitor what they post, what they like, um, the things that, you know, they may put up or, you know, be involved with outside of school. I think that's important as far as protecting the image, not only of the kid, but also of your brand or the school or the program. Um, that is something that they have to understand that colleges are looking at when they recruit them as well. Um, so I take a lot of pride in, you know, just staying well versed in what our kids are posting, what they're doing outside of school and making sure that we catch things that could be detrimental to their future as well as the program um, and the brand that we represent here. I definitely think it's necessary for all football programs to be on social media. Um, if your goal is the kids, then you should be looking to maximize that exposure for them. Um, my suggestion is if, if you're not well versed in social media, you know, reach out to some guys that are. Um, try to, you know, do a little bit of research. Hire some student interns because we know the teenagers are, are social media professionals. Um, just always be learning the same way we are with X's and O's and leadership. I think growing your program is no different and utilizing social media uh, should be a major important part of your program. All new tonight, more sports delays, this time at the high school level. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association made the announcement today. Fall sports will, like football will be pushed back to February and will run through April. The Athletic Association says all sports season will be shortened. Football will play seven games and most other sports 14. COVID this year uh, impacted uh, athletics throughout the United States tremendously. The one thing that it did for our athletes, it allowed them to live our uh, mantra. Our mantra is Vance Tough. You know, accomplishing the goals despite the odds or obstacles that set before you. And that's exactly what we did this year. We had major obstacles, the biggest one dealing with COVID, and we set out to accomplish our goal of being back-to-back -back state champions, and we did that. So we were Vance Tough. We lived our mantra. Being that, you know, we just come off a state championship ring, we was thinking, all right, we're going to run it back. It's going to be my senior year. All my homeboys, all, all the boys that were here, that were seniors when we won in 2019, um, were on their way out. So they was like, you know, go ahead and get another one for us, little bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead, just keep the, keep the train going, keep it going. And... 2020 comes, you know, January, February, and we just we working out in the uh, weight room. We getting ready, just going to see my guys go off to college soon. Stefan went early, Steve went early, and uh, I was like, all right, it's up, it's up to me, it's up to me now, you know. So 2020 comes around, and about March, we get this word, you know, it's just like disease out that's you know getting people really sick, people uh, getting out of school and things like that. We thought, ah, anything that serious. So it got to the, it got to the, the states, you know. And school shut out. You know, like, oh, we probably be out for like two weeks, but we were definitely coming back. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, school canceled. Like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Then two weeks going into some months, and some months going all the way to the summer, then all the way to the fall. And next thing you know, we don't have a football season in the fall. And I knew, at be also being committed to University of North Carolina, New University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill um, at the time, I already knew I was going to leave school early, even if I did have a season. And um, when we found out I didn't have a season, I was like, well, I'm going to pursue, pursue bigger things, pursue my future, and you know, change my life and my family's life. So that was the decision made for everything, me not running it back. COVID's had a, a severe impact on everyone across the country. Uh, I think North Carolina was hit pretty severely hard because our season was delayed um, and then flipped to spring. So based on the signing days and you know, typically how scholarships are given out, it kind of put us behind the eight ball in terms of recruiting. The exposure still been there, uh, but the lack of scholarships is really what hurt a lot of the student athletes in our state. Um, typically, we would have kids signed by now. We would have very few kids still deciding what their college 
um, situation or plan is going to be post-graduation. Um, obviously, NCAA extended an extra year to their student athletes, but did not um, increase the number of scholarships. So that obviously affects your income and freshmen. Uh, we continue to, you know, reach out to scouts, recruiters, and try to come up with a plan for our kids that are unsigned. Um, the goal is always to have 100% uh, signed or have at least a post-graduation plan. Uh, with the COVID, we call it the COVID season. Uh, so it was this season probably been one of my toughest seasons in my 12 years, years of coaching. Uh, and the challenges for me, the challenges for the kids came with not being able to lift weights, not being able to get out and develop a relationship uh, with the kids. Uh, being that this was my last year was my first year, this year was much tougher because I didn't get a chance to actually develop a relationship, a personal relationship with a lot of my kids. Uh, and as far as, you know, working out and, you know, doing the things that we would normally do on a daily basis in the offseason, we didn't get a chance to do those. So to come out and win a state championship with, you know, everything that was going on with the COVID uh, protocols and the pandemics and things like that, not being able to be uh, in groups of more than 10, it was challenging. Uh, but the kids took it upon themselves to work out on their own, which says a lot about the type of kids that we have here at Vance. Now. 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 Go. One of my main responsibilities is the recruitment and, and helping kids to get to the next level to play. Um, maintaining grades, grade checks, um, making sure that we have highlights out there of our kids so people not only in North Carolina but all over the United States of America can, can um, get a glimpse of what we're doing here at Vance High School. Because when you look at Vance High School, you look at uh, top, one of the top teams in the United States of America, we're automatically will receive a lot of uh, interest from colleges. So my job is when those colleges come to recruit our kids, to make sure that our student athletes are ready to receive that scholarship offer. Well, first and foremost, you have, a, you have to have a good work ethic. On any level you're in, you're, you're gonna have to put in the work to be successful. Um, I would say second is, you know, being tough mentally and physically. Um, that also makes a good football player. And then. Also having a good grasp of the fundamentals of your position and uh, an overall knowledge of the game. As a head football coach, uh, you know, to get your program to the top notch, uh, what's it? it can't be just about you. And I guess that's my philosophy. It can't be just about you. It has to be about the guys that surround you. Them guys, they want to work for you. Uh, you have to have a relationship with them. But also, you have to have a relationship with your kids. You have to have a relationship with your kids. I think that's the biggest thing. And make sure your coaches have a relationship with the kids. Um, our kids. You know, the fun loving, we laugh, we joke, uh, but we're on them hard all the time. Uh, so they understand it's a time, you know, to play and joke, and then it's a time for work. My best moment this year, I say Huff, Huff game, because we lost the first game and just knowing we beat ourselves and everything. So being able to get our payback and knowing they were talking junk, you know, and go out there and earn our respect, because everybody doubted us after we lost that first game and we went out there to beat them. You know, it just felt good. The two biggest moments for me during this football season was, you know, obviously winning the state championship just because of who we had to play and, you know, how it all played out. We came into the season number one team and we kind of lost the mantle. And uh, the team that we that beat us, we ended up being in the, on the way to getting to that championship. Then in the state championship, you know, uh, really, I never really told anybody this, but I had a personal, like, goal to win the MVP because of, all the talk about the other team and their quarterback and their five-star receiver. So I that was a personal goal of mine. Then another big moment that happened for me was I got my offer to Columbia, which is the school I'm going to be attending. And uh, that was really a crazy moment for me because, you know, COVID happened and I really almost lost hope in, you know, getting any offers at all. And then when, I, when they finally called me and it was an Ivy League school, I was kind of in shock and then I visited and I fell in love with it. And 
now I'm set up to go to a great college and play football. It's not difficult to get the athletes to maintain a good academic status when, when they understand how academics plays into their success as an athlete. The same skills that it requires or takes to be successful in the classroom are the same skills that it takes to be successful on the football field, basketball court, or baseball diamond. You have to have self-control. You have to have discipline. You have to be able to, to listen. You have to be able to follow directions. All of those traits and those characteristics that it takes to be an amazing student, you need, the, you need those to be a great athlete. And again, our, our coaches and mentors have done a great job of helping our young men understand why it's important to be a great student if they want to be a great athlete. You can't be one without the other. Um, regardless of what the stereotypes are of athletes, regardless of what the stereotypes are of African-American men in our community, um, we know that there has to be a level of excellence that helps them to be prepared beyond high school, beyond the sports, because at some point in their lives, they're going to take off the cleats. They're going to put down the football. And what have we done as coaches, administrators, and parents to help them win the, the most important game of life? the game of life beyond football, but the game of being um, a successful um, citizen who contributes back to our community. And I think it's all tied in together, and our coaches um, do a wonderful job of helping our, our scholar athletes do that. For the next person that puts on the number, number one jersey, if it's not, you know, retired or gone, um, I want to say that you step into some big shoes. Um, I want to tell that person that some days are going to be hard. Some days you're not going to want to do it. Some days you're going to look up and be like, why am I doing this? Some days you're going to be feeling aches and pains and, you know, just be like, why? I just want to tell them, um, think about the people that attend this school that go through life. Think about the people that attend this school that don't have the opportunities you have. Think about the people that attend this school that are taking care of their family at 15, 16, 17 years old. Think about the people that go to the school that have to deal with real world issues and you get to have an opportunity to play football and, you know, leave this place and attend better while they still have to, you know, figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to go to school? Are they going to help their family out? Are they going to pay these bills? Are they going to, you know, keep listening to the teacher nag on them like they don't care? Um, I would say when you ask why, think about that and keep pushing harder. Push for your dreams and push for hope that they'll know that it's a chance. You know, he did it. I'm, I'm, I, can make, I can be successful. I can do something out of this school. I can be proud to claim this school. I can, you know, even though it's not the most pretty, still have pride in that. Yeah, I went to that school and nobody could, nobody could touch us. The expectation is not going to change. Uh, regardless of who we have on our team, each year the expectation is to win a state championship. And I put that pressure on myself by winning it the first two years. The kids put a pressure on themselves because they didn't want it for the last two years. So that's the expectation uh, now here. Uh, and the kids expect it. Right after we won that state championship, they talked about getting a third. So they already honed in. They already mind is focused on winning another one. So I don't, I'm not like not being arrogant, but I think we could be right there at, at the end of the year to try to go for a three-peat. To Bubba, uh, keep it going, bro. Uh, I came in here and I had a great expectations on me. You know, I feel like I came in here and raised those. Obviously, I was supposed to win one state championship because they came off the one before. Everybody's telling me, um, you need to do this, you need to do that. If you don't do this, it's a failure. Um, that's a lot a lot of expectations on your shoulders, bro. So what I would tell you is embrace it, don't run from it, and uh, push come to shove. Know that you put in the work and you're prepared to do what you need to do. The goal um, in doing our name change from Vance High School to Julius Chambers High School in regards of winning another state championship in football, it remains the same. Um, instead of calling ourselves Vance Tough, we'll transition over to Chambers Tough. You know, this was a guy who uh, fought through adversity to help less fortunate people 
in education. So that name fits what we want to do and what we stand for. So nothing changes. We absolutely feel that we'll win another state championship next year. We absolutely feel that we'll continue to be the best football program in the state of North Carolina, and absolutely nothing will change. Double A state football championship, Vance in an unbeaten Rollsville. I knew we were going to repeat after halftime when we came out and scored that first touchdown because the team that was out there the first half wasn't the team that we normally are. And being here the last two years, I know when my kids feel confident and when they're going to start to turn it on and start to pour it on. After that, after that uh, first touchdown, I knew then that we were going to win that game because my kids weren't going to be denied. You could see it in their eyes. You could see it in their effort. You could see it in their excitement. Uh, but getting to the end of the game, getting to the end of the game when I realized that they couldn't put up any more points, that's when I knew. And the pressure kind of went away. It kind of went away. But at the same time, the pressure's still there because now you set the standard of the school when you win it two times in a row in your first two years. You can't go back from that. <laughs> you can't go back from that. So the pressure's still there, and it was still there after the game. But the pressure of that game left probably about five or six minutes uh, after halftime. I just want people to realize, man, winning a state championship is not easy. Uh, you can have the greatest coaches in the world. You can have the greatest players in the world. But if you don't have the support of your admin, if you don't have the support of your AD, and the, mainly the support of your fans, it's tough. It's tough to make those things happen. We done done it twice. So we're going to need even more support from our fans, from our admin, from the players, from the parents. 
that's what gets these type of things done. Everybody on the same page and everybody, you know, chiming in at, uh, in a collective group. Um, I would say a few things. Uh, number one, you know, there's a lot of preconceived conception or misconception, excuse me, about what Vance is or how the high school is or how our kids are. Um, and I think we've proven the last few years that, you know, it's about what you make it. Um, obviously, we've been blessed to win, um, but we've been even more blessed to send kids to great schools, you know, Ivy League education, full scholarships. And I think that for those who are not here, but are watching or entertaining, bringing their child here, again, it's what you make it, you know, how you want to be successful, what you want to take out of your years in high school. That's what Vance is, but even more so we're a family. I think that's what makes us successful here. Everyone has a genuine love for each other, uh, whether that's admin, staff, coaches, kids. Uh, there's a genuine love and family feel, and that's hard to break up. And I think that that just makes us who we are, and that's what adds to us being successful. I would like to thank all of um, the previous Vance athletes, uh, previous coaches, um, teachers, fans who, you know, over the years have helped us to get to the point where we are. You know, it's, it's, I'm tearing up right now, um, but um, it's a bittersweet moment that hmm, we're doing this name change, but, you know, I just want to thank you guys. I don't necessarily feel a pressure attached to the name The Last Vance. Um, obviously, it's a great hashtag. We borrowed it from the basketball team. Um, it kind of just, you know, stuck out. It was something great, you know, and we definitely thanked them and, and reached out to them about even using it. Uh, but what I think it says is we're ushering out, you know, a great history. Um, we're ushering out a great t tradition of winning and success, but also, you know, welcoming in uh, some new traditions or newfound success. I don't necessarily feel there was a pressure attached to that name itself, other than just being who we are. Um, and at this point, you know, we're blessed enough to be able to usher that out with a state championship, well, two state championships um, in football and then two in women's basketball. Um, so now it's about, you know, setting new traditions, but still being who we are under the Julius Chambers name. It's a lot of love out there for Vance High School. And we want to continue that path onto Chambers High. And I'm excited about our future. Excited about where we're going. And excited about continuing to help our student athletes to be the best people that they could possibly be. That's it. Mm.